big series can be done if my opponent's legs are crossed or uncrossed. It doesn't really matter. Since we already did a pass in the first one, we're going to do this with his legs uncrossed. So he's back here again on this Saturday Night Ride. And he just has position. He has his legs uncrossed. Some people call it the open guard. Whatever you want to call it, it's fine. From here, same setup. Everything's the same. My posture's the same. My knees are a good, strong base. My ankles are together. Eyes are on target. Hands are on the hips. Same, same concept. Now I'm just going to come up. I'm going to push his knee. As I push his knee down, monitor the other leg. Same shin lock we just did. I'm going to bring this knee across here. I'm going to grind that shin bone in. Grab his foot and pull it up. Right? So everything here is the same. Grinding that shin across, lifting here. From this position now, I'm going to post on this side. I'm going to step up and sit right on his hip. When I sit on his hip, I'm going to bring my feet together like this and fall to the opposite side. Cross my ankles, catch his leg, and I again, ankles across, knees are squeezed, my heel is kicking him in the backside. Pull, toes to nose, hook it. If you're going to hook on the bottom, same thing this way. If you're going to back swim here, and then finish with that toe hold. Okay, so when we go back through this again, we're in a good position. His legs are already uncrossed, so I just push. I pin his knee down. This hand monitors this, this leg. I want to make sure he's not going anywhere. I slide across, shin lock here. Catch it, pull. From this position, my knee, my left knee, is going to go right up to the inside of his thigh here. So I'm bringing my leg nice and, nice and close to his leg here, trying to push against him. Put my hands on the mat, and just like as if a runner is getting ready to run out of the gate, same kind of concept. I'm going to bring my hips up and forward like this, like I'm going to run that way. As my hip comes forward, it's bringing my hip further up his thigh. I don't want to spin from here, I'm too far down his knee. So when I come forward this way, now I'm more to his hip, past his thigh up here. So I come forward and just back step here. Once I back step, I'm actually just sitting right on his hip. Click your heels together, and fall to your side. Once you fall to your side, cross your feet, squeeze your knees, lay on your shoulder. We never want to finish knee bars from here. This is a, this is a bad position for a knee bar. I always want to be here. Now I have all my body in line, everything straight up. I have good leverage, toes to nose. First one, I can hook underneath or above, here or here, and then back swim under again like we did earlier, and then finish with that figure four toe hold. Again, bending his leg, doing that crunch forward, and getting this rotation here. This is the most important part. I don't want to just squeeze his foot or just twist one. I just want to turn to the side and down as I pull this one back. This is really important on a toe hold. Here. Excellent defense. He breaks down my top wrist lock pretty good. So as I'm, I'm working here and he's pulling across, I'm going to continue to pull the direction he's pulling. Get that momentum going this way. When I drop my chest right on the back of his arm here, I'm going to scoop under his head here. Once I get positioned, I can frame it or grab here. I'm going to jump out the side control and now I'm in for a back swim side show. As I go from here, I'm going to walk my legs up towards his head and just squeeze. And there's your first part. From here, I want to add this to a pin. I switch my hips, so now this knee comes up to his hip. Scoop his leg, and now I have a pin with the submission. Okay? We can also transition from here to an outside and crank him this way. All right, so again, from our first position, I started here, I went my top wrist lock. He defends and pulls to the center. I continue to pull it, I drop my chest. I scoop underneath, get my grip here or here, 
jump out. When I jump out, all my weight is staying on this arm. I can't give him any space. If I give him a little bit of space, he'll pull his arm free. Once I lock it in, I walk toward his head and squeeze for the pin. I scoop it and lock or scoop outside his leg and bring his head down toward his toes. school catch wrestling move. It's, it's a really cool one. I like it a lot. It's a lot of fun to mess with people with. It, sometimes it locks in. You can hit it real quick. And it locks in. It's real painful. Flexible guys won't feel the same effect as guys who are not quite as flexible. So you definitely, you need to play with it a little bit when you start drilling it. But when you get it, it it's a great move. So I'm going to hit this one from head and arm again. And this time maybe Jack's trying to get my back. He's working his hooks over. And you see there's a lot of guys trying to catch him here. And he's setting me up for a sweep or, or to, uh, to try and take my back or whatever he can get. So I'm going to control here. I need to break this grip. This is the most important. So I can shoulder lock him by just coming underneath here and cranking this. This is a, a sh little shoulder lock. I won't get too far into detail on that. It's just a little, little way to break the grip. Or I can just come inside here and dig my elbows. He's got his hands together. Dig my elbows in here. Just grind across his hands. Any way I can to break his grip, it's fine. All I need is his hands free. So once he's here, I grind across, dig my elbows in, control here. I'm gonna post off his bicep and on this hand here that's under his head. This hand's gonna stay under his head until I move. My foot is gonna stay right here as he's locked in. He's got his feet figure forward here. I'm gonna keep this hooked right underneath here. It's gonna turn my foot the direction I wanna roll. I'm gonna push off his bicep, push off here. As I stand, I'm gonna spin, as I spin rather, I'm gonna stand. So I'm gonna spin all the way around as I spin. I come up and I stand here. I'm going to push his knees down, and here's my standing Indian death lock. It's a great move. It's a pretty cool looking one. It's a lot of fun to mess with people, uh, but it's it locks in tight when you get this right because his legs are figure forward. My foot is hooking his foot here, and I'm just kind of kicking toward his butt. So this foot is actually going in toward him this way, and I'm pulling my calf back, which is locking him up here, and I'm going to push his knees down. And you see, Jack taps immediately. It's a really painful lock, and it's just as just as to get out of than it is to get in. So he, he gets position here. He's got his leg over me. He's starting to figure four. I need to step over his foot. This is really important. If I do this without this stepping over, I'm not going to catch this. So I step over his foot. Once I'm over his foot, I turn my foot slightly. I spin the direction that I want to go, like the direction my toe's going. I'm going to spin that way. My hands come to the mat. This foot's going to hook right underneath here. I kick toward his body. So this is all locking in. So his foot is caught under his, his kneecap here. His other foot is caught on top of my laces here. I stand up. Once I stand up, I just slide back and push his knees down. And that's your submission. So I'm going to go one more time through this. Sorry, Jack. So here, he lets this go a second. We'll start right from the beginning. So I'm in a good position, head and arm. He throws that leg over. Once that leg is over, I feel him working here. Now I'm ready on the top of his leg, so I'm good. If I started out here, I'd have to adjust that. So it's something definitely in detail to keep in mind. If I go here, I'm, I'm just going to go half guard. So I step over, or if I'm already over, that's fine. Turn your foot slightly, slide here. When I slide, hands to the mat, come over, stand up, kick toward his butt, and push his knees down. Famous Frank Gotch toe hold. So from here, again, we have a good, he has a good position here. I'm going to step my back leg inside here. As I step in between, I'm going to block his knee and drive his ankle here. So I tap his knee, drive his ankle down. Once I drive him down, 
I'm gonna take this hand up, lock the knee, and go weave through his weave through his legs here. So in between his thighs here, block his shin. When this blocks his shin here, I'm sitting back on this leg here, almost like a ball and chain. Block, grab his foot here on the block and push his up and back this way. Here, that's your toe hold right there. So when we come back up, and again, I step through here. This hand comes under, I block his knee. This hand's gonna drive almost like a heel hook. I'm pushing his foot down this way and blocking his knee. As I do it, this leg kicks back and sits on this ankle here. So I'm locking him up. I have this leg already locked up in good position. The hand that blocked the knee just slides right through, grabs onto his shin and his ankle right down here. Grab his foot, lift, and turn. So I'm getting a push-pull here, like this. So one more time, let's go back up. So I step through, I block the knee, drive, bring him down, I keep my weight on him, come through, get this, grab, and as I get, again, push-pull here, block and go. From this position, I already have the ball and chain on the back leg, I can always sit back and take this one too. So over or under grip, which is a nice little addition to it. So if you get this one, maybe you're having trouble with it, or he's just not, not tapping from it, you can keep this leg and swing back this way and take this one. It's already locked in position. So you're gonna mix your Frank Gosh to hold with a ball and chain.